This video is sponsored by Alcid E Homes, whose mission it is to accelerate the advent of sustainable healthy living systems around the world. Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 76. And yes, that is the Giga Berlin factory, because as you probably know, I'm on a road trip around Europe. So I got a lot of great updates for you and a lot of great news, of course. So let's check it out and let's dive right in. So, the competition is no longer coming, it's already here. But so what? So sure, more EVs are coming in the so-called competition, but Tesla is up and beyond anything else. As you can see, the Model Y has taken the lead in the US over the Tesla Model 3. And then we find the X and S down the list, but I still think the 1800 sold is not equally divided between S and X since the refreshed X has not yet started deliveries. So I think this is mostly just the S. But anyway, then there is the competition. The Mark E, the ID4, Nissan Leaf, Taycan, Audi, e-tron and e-tron sportsback and the BMW i3. But the combined sale of all of these EVs is 34,609. So still less than the Model Y or the Model 3 for that matter. Wow! How is Tesla ever going to survive that crazy competition? <laughs> so, as we talked about before in the last news show, the Ford Mark E only sold about 6,356 units, and that was actually down a couple of hundred units from Q1. But let's go back three years when Tesla finally broke production hell in June 2018 and got over 5,000 cars per week produced and a couple of months later 7,000 per week and Elon happily tweeted about this 7,000 per week and former Ford CEO tweeted 7,000 in four hours. <laughs> well yes Ford you can make ice cars in volume so good for you, since they will soon be going extinct. The only units that count in the future market is BEVs. How many BEVs can you produce for it? Well, Tesla produced about 15,000 EVs per week in Q2. And Ford, well, you produced a whopping 473 EVs per week in Q2. Wow, Ford. Yes, you really know how to produce cars. You talked at the reveal of the Mark E and the Ford F-150 Lightning like you make nothing but EVs and are helping us for a cleaner future. And then all you can do is 473 EVs per week. And you were marking Tesla when they got to 7,000 per week. And you can even do 500 per week here in 2021. You clearly don't get this game if you think your stupid ice cars count. And let's not forget since you made this tweet, Ford has gone down from 6 million vehicles per year to only a little over 4 million vehicles per year. And Tesla will this year more than triple its sales from 2018. So if Ford continue and Tesla continue their sales trend, well, Tesla will probably already be bigger than Ford already in 2023. Yes, Ford has been very good at marking Tesla over the years, but they just can't keep up with Tesla when it comes to EVs. Not on one single spec, not even production, that everyone said was the legacy automaker's advantage. Yes, for ICE cars, not EVs. And it clearly shows. Maybe use more time for it on getting better at making and producing EVs and not so much time marking Tesla. It will only make you look very dumb when they will overtake you in total production as well. But it's not only in production and specs the Mark E can keep up. Tesla is kind of making Ford look like they don't know what they're doing. 
because Sandy Monroe just made a video about the thermal system in the Model Y compared to the Mark E. And if you think Tesla don't know how to make cars, you better go watch this video. The Model Y makes it look like Ford don't know what the heck they're doing. They use three times more hoses, three times more parts, and the fluid alone in the thermal system weighs 22 kilos in Ford's compared to the 9 kilo of the Tesla Model Y. This is crazy. Look at Tesla's nice little tight fit there of their whole thermal system. And then look at this big mess Ford is using. The Mark E might look the part from the outside and to the customers, but when we take a look under the hood, so to speak, Tesla has just become a much better car maker than anyone else. Because as Sandy said, the crazy thing is the Mark E is the next best thing after the Model Y. Everything else is worse. The ID4 is worse. How is that even possible? This just makes it look like the old legacy automakers don't really know how to make cars anymore. They are building them like they have done for decades and Tesla has just innovated on every little thing inside the car, making them cheaper and faster to produce. So maybe some will say Ford Mark E is catching up to Tesla, but that is only because normal people don't see this mess of a build this car really is under the hood. It is not even close to the Tesla Model Y. And in China, the Tesla Model Y see a massive wave of new orders after the standard range was introduced. In the last news shows, the Model Y standard range was about $10,000 cheaper, making it available to a much bigger market. And that is showing now with a massive increase in new orders for the Tesla's cheaper offering of their popular Model Y. And just a quick look at the Europe market over the last four years before the Model Y comes in September. So no cherry picking here in, in month or quarter. This is just the cumulative sales of EVs through the last four years in these 11 European countries that represent about 80% of the car market in Europe. And as you can see Tesla thanks to the success of the Model 3 is in the lead and that is before the Berlin factory. All of these Teslas has been exported to Europe from half around the world. All of the others are built in Europe. Man, when the next generation Model Y will be flying off the assembly line in Europe, Tesla will take off like a rocket in Europe. And it's not just in Europe that Tesla is dominating. And the Tesla Model 3 and Y have also become the top two best-selling EVs in South Korea. Tesla is dominating the South Korean EV market with 43% share of all passengers EVs sold in the first half of 2021. Wow. And in addition, the manufacturer dominate the market for imported cars in South Korea during the same period, accounting for a whopping 81.4%. Tesla was already the best selling EV in South Korea last year, but now they are up over 64% in the first half of 2021. Number three in the EV race in South Korea is Hyundai's great Ionic 5. And everyone laughed at Tesla when they in 2018 put up this tender, these big spring structures in 2018 to get the production of the Model 3 up and going as fast as possible. But now we see that Tesla is using these tents from time to time to ramp up new productions. And we have talked about it before that Tesla has put up such a tent again at the Fremont factory, probably to help out with the Model Y production. But now Tesla is trying to make this tent permanent. Yes, Tesla can keep up with demand even with the two new factories coming online soon. We did also see that Tesla's registrations in California in Q2 2021 grew sevenfold compared to last year and accounting for more than half of all the sales in the United States. And again, the Model Y is leading the way. And maybe Volkswagen has just realized that Tesla will do what they have said about their batteries because they have just said Northwold is not moving fast enough. 
Volkswagen cut the contract in March with Northwold because things were moving too slow. So now Volkswagen want to produce their own battery cells, like themselves. It will be very interesting to watch this play out because this is not easy scaling up battery production. Northwold is having problems and even the big battery manufacturers cannot make battery factories that can produce anything near what Tesla will be able to do. So going to be interesting to see if Volkswagen can pull this one off or if they have just delayed themselves even further. And we also learned that Volkswagen will make new production plants in Africa and South America for ICE cars. That is just against everything they're talking about to the public that they will lead in the EV race and they and they are on the road to zero emission and the future is BEVs and so on. And then they open new plans to make more ICE cars. Volkswagen CEO Brent Seda said the goal is to enable CO2 neutral mobility based on ethanol and biofuel for emerging markets. What? Ethanol and biofuel? Well, they do emit and pollute and are not CO2 neutral, so don't really know what you're getting at here. So just as we saw with the big oil companies that sent their 3000 times more polluting gasoline to second and third world countries, that is exactly what Volkswagen is doing here. Oh, so we can earn more money by selling even more polluting ice cars in the poor countries around the world because they don't have such strict emission laws. Well, let's do that. Volkswagen is like most legacy automakers, mostly talk. Back in 2018, Herbert Dice said, we will come in 2020 with vehicles that can do everything like Tesla and have the price. Well, they can't do half of what a Tesla can do and the ID3 is only about 30-35% cheaper than a Tesla Model 3. And in 2021, Volkswagen says, by 2025, we will have a good chance of overtaking Tesla. <laughs> Not even close, my friend. By 2025, Volkswagen will be around 1.5 million EVs, while Tesla will be around 5 to 7 million. So it's not that game you will eat, and I doubt you will have an EV at that point that can get anywhere close to the Tesla Model S Plaid. So it's not that game either. Not the battery game, not the charging game. So again, I don't really know what Volkswagen is talking about here. Just sounds very detached from reality. But what they're saying at the same time here by saying they hope to catch up to Tesla in 2025 is that they will not be able to keep up with Tesla for the next four years. Just saying. And we of course had a lot of videos about Tesla's new full self-driving version 9 beta updates. And it is mind-blowing, very cool new views of the world around the car as the car sees it. But we also have more videos of beta testers starting their Teslas in the driveway and driving all by itself all the way to a parking lot somewhere. Even on non-marked dark country roads, it handles like a champ. And we see videos about Tesla handling a closed road and navigating around that. Very impressive. Yeah, if you have ever heard anyone talk about full self-driving and saying Tesla is behind, <laughs> they just don't get it. It is simply just because they don't understand how far ahead Tesla really is. No one else can do this. Absolutely no one. Let me know of any other company on the planet, car company or not, that can make a car drive from a driveway to a parking lot with no intervention on pretty much any road on the planet. Yeah, none, zip, zero, nada. Tesla already has full cell driving cars. They are just not 99.999% perfect yet, but they are like 90% there. This is just amazing. We are not long away from something that will change the world forever as we know it. And Tesla will be able to do something no one else can make an over-the-air update and a fleet of maybe two million cars will wake up as full self-driving cars. This is nuts. 
Tesla cannot be caught on full self-driving, no chance. And Elon even said this week that the cars will be able to hear as well, understand hazard, turn signals and hand gestures and more. And Elon just congratulated the beta Teslas for no accidents reported since the rollout started 259 days ago. Nice. We have always known the oil companies have been fighting against climate science, but we have never had proof. But we do now. ExxonMobil has revealed that they have aggressively been fighting climate change science using front organization, something we know oil company has done for decades and is knew about fossil fuel was causing climate change, but they buried it and continued their sales of even more fossil fuel cars. Did we aggressively fight yeah. against um, uh, some of the science? Yeah. Uh, yes. Did we join some of these shadow groups uh, to work against uh, some of the early efforts? Yes, that's yeah. true. Uh, but there's nothing, there's nothing illegal about that. Yeah. yeah, no wonder there are so many uninformed people out there thinking that our climate crisis is not real even though the science is there, because oil companies and car companies have been spreading fear, doubt, uncertainty and lies for decades. And speaking of the climate, the EU has big plans for fighting climate change. The EU wants to ban all ice cars by 2035. Nothing is certain yet, but this is the plan so far, and it is because the EU wants this continent to be the first continent to get to zero emission, and the EU wants to cut the emission by 55% by 2030. That we have to do. Now we just have to try to find out a way of how to do it. It might sound like a big target, but here in my country, we have a target of 70% by 2030, and we are well on the way, and it is not in a way that will hurt our economy or our jobs, quite the opposite. So I have no doubt that they will find a way to make this come to life, and a ban of ice cars will happen by 2035 in all of Europe. So for BMW to think they will still be making nice cars for the next 30 years is just stupid. I personally think the sales of new ice cars will be very, very small after 2030. No one will want them. They will be more expensive than an EV at that point, and the EV is more superior in every way and almost no maintenance. And I think in 2030, the charging speed will be on par with filling up your ice car. So why oh why will anyone want to buy an ice car at that point? They won't. And Britswold wants to build a game-changing battery factory in the UK. And British Walt want to build a big battery factory in the UK to make batteries for all the EVs going to be made in the UK so they don't have to import all the batteries for their EVs. The company says that the plant would be operational by 2023 and bring in a much needed employment to the region. It is hoped that the factory will eventually produce enough lithium ion batteries for 300,000 electric cars a year by 2027. So that does not sound like more than maybe 20 20, 25 gigawatt hours. So even though BBC writes game-changing battery factory, it doesn't look like anything different than all the others and nothing like Tesla's battery factory. If Tesla makes a battery factory in the UK, we are looking at something that is 10 times bigger than this one from British Walt. So nice to see this move and I am rooting for them, but nothing game-changing here, just another battery factory and a little bit of SpaceX news. And Elon has showed off their next generation, drone ship. And it is looking totally badass. And Richard Branson made a flight to the edge of our atmosphere and was weightless for a while. Very cool to see and it could definitely be something of a cool tourist attraction in the future. Nothing that will get us to the moon or Mars or something, but a fun playground for the rich. But cool to see Richard getting his childhood dream to come true. And was joined on the day by a good friend. Elon Musk, and SpaceX will soon break ground on a second Raptor factory at SpaceX test site in Texas. 
that will make Raptor engines in high volume and be the most advanced rocket engine factory in the world. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this news show. And just like Alex here, I have never seen an EV being towed away before. Maybe it's just going for a Volkswagen software update. And if you think you can just lie about Tesla cars to try to make them look bad, you're wrong. Tesla takes legal action against Chinese driver who alleged brake failure incident. Hope he gets a big fine. And I don't know if it's just me, but this new Audi Quattro that cost $73,000 is looking so outdated, like looking at an old Blackberry. I cannot believe that this is a car that's coming out this year and cost $73,000. I am speechless. But not only that, this is an Audi e-tron GT inside and this is the Tesla Model S refreshed. I mean, come on man. There is just no contest here. The inside of the Audi again just look already outdated. And this looks like the future of a rocket ship. And we see a camouflage Tesla Model 3 in India doing a bit of testing. So no doubt that Tesla is coming to India. Samsung, SDI and LG will also start producing the 4680 cells. Not with Tesla's advanced technology inside of course, but they will produce it in the Tesla form factor. So making batteries for only Tesla. So making batteries that only Tesla can use because they know Tesla will buy every single battery they can make for them. And Elon once again confirms that the supercharger will be updated from 250 to 300 kilowatts soon. Nice. General Motors is telling owners of 2017 to 2019 Bolt EVs not to park their vehicles inside or charge them unattended overnight. Two of the vehicles had caught fire after they were repaired as part of the recall meant to address this fire risk. Well, that's not good. And Tesla will hold their earnings call for Q2 on July the 26th. And we know the Cybertruck has reached over 1.2 million pre-orders. But now we learn that Tesla Cybertruck reportedly will use Samsung cameras in a massive $400 million deal. Well, of course, it will be huge since Tesla will make an insane amount of Cybertrucks. And Ford makes gas-scented fragrance for the Mustang Mark E GT. Now, this is just stupid. They're just so hung up on their ice cars, they just can't let it go. Just spend all your time and money making great EVs, not wasting time of something like this. And let me ask you, what do you want to pick? The Tesla Model 3 Performance that does a 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds and has 325 miles of range? Or do you want to pay $10,000 more? and get 75 miles less range and be 0.6 seconds slower. Yeah, nothing beats a Tesla when it comes to the value of your money. And we saw a Tesla Model X actually surviving a tornado and captured by its Tesla cams. And let's end off with a bit of fun. We have seen a lot of full self-driving testers this week. So let's just remember the most important reason to why we need full self-driving cars. Here is a human not noticing a big tree blocking the whole road. <laughs> How can you not see this? <laughs> yeah, we need full self-driving. The faster, the better. That is all we have time for in this news show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. 
But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only, so don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.